What's up, it's Aaron, back with a brand new Next Step Outdoors gear review. In this video, I'm gonna be reviewing three of the top new cell cameras from this past year after a full season of testing them in the field. Stick around till the end because I discovered something pretty shocking that might be a huge deterrent from you buying one of these cameras. Whether you are brand new to cell cameras or already have a full fleet, this video should answer a lot of your questions and help you make the right decision moving forward. Before we get rolling, if you like hunting videos, hunting tips, and gear reviews, make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel. So why I chose these three specific cameras because they were the new flagship cameras for each of their respective companies. And I have a lot of experience running older models from each of these companies, so I was really eager to get my hands on them and try out some of the new models for the year. Each had specific features that were of interest to me, and I'll explain what those were as I introduce each camera. In case you wanna purchase any of these cameras at the end of the video, I'll make sure all three of them are linked down below in the description. Camera number one is the SpyPoint Flex. And the SpyPoint Flex has a 33 megapixel camera, 1080p video, 0.3 second trigger speed and has a low glow infrared flash out to just under 100 feet. Right out of the gate, some of the features that I really like about the Flex is the fact that you can put a 512 gigabyte SD card into it. That's important because the whole point of having a cell camera is not having to make additional trips to the camera once you deploy it in the field. Having a high capacity SD card means you can run this thing on HD video, HD pictures, and you're not gonna fill up your SD card. You can get an entire season plus more off of one SD card. So that was what first thing that I really liked. The other thing I like about this camera is it's a dual SIM multi-carrier camera. So it's automatically gonna connect to whatever the strongest cellular provider is in your specific spot. The Flex has a one latch design and inside there are two buttons and one switch. And what I like about this, this button in the middle here is a test button which allows you to press the button while you're in the field deploying the camera and get a picture sent to your phone while you're right there with the camera. Too many times in the past, I've deployed cell cameras of all different brands only to get home an hour, two hours, however far, only to realize that the camera wasn't actually connected properly and I'd have to drive back, troubleshoot, and get it connected. This way, while you're right there in the woods, press the button, get the picture, make sure you're connected. The last thing that I really liked about the new Flex is the fact that you can do remote firmware updates. One of the biggest complaints I had about SpyPoint's previous models is that they would do these firmware updates and you had to physically go to the camera, get the SD card, format it, do all this different stuff. This way, if they come out with firmware updates, you can do it right from the app without going into the field and having to pull the camera. Camera number two is the Tacticam Reveal X Pro. The Reveal X Pro has a 16 megapixel camera, 1080p video, a sub half second trigger speed, and an invisible flash range of up to 80 feet. Some of the features that I really like about the Reveal X Pro is the fact that it has a built-in GPS, so you're gonna be able to see a pin of exactly where your camera is deployed at. It also helps in the event that your camera is ever stolen. But another thing that I like is they added this LCD screen inside the camera body here. It's gonna help you aim in the camera when you're deploying in the field. It's also gonna allow you to see pictures and videos right there on the screen. All three of these cameras are multi-carrier compatible, so this one allows you to use either AT&T or Verizon in, but you do have to physically switch the SIM card to what one you want it to be. It's not like the other ones where it automatically flips back and forth. You have to physically swap out SIM cards. Reveal X Pro is compatible with 32 gigabyte SD cards. It runs on 12 AA batteries, has a one year warranty, and is priced right around $150. The last thing that I'll say about Tacticam that I really appreciate is their USA based customer support team. Last but not least, camera three is the Moultrie Edge. The Edge has a 33 megapixel camera. 720p video, a 0.85 second trigger speed, and an 80 foot low glow infrared flash. Ultra Edge has 16 gigabytes of internal memory built in, eliminating the need for external memory cards. It runs off eight or 16 AA batteries, which is super cool because if you're gonna put this camera somewhere far from home or wanna make sure that you're not gonna have to go swap batteries in the middle of season, you can load this thing up with 16 batteries. It's gonna give you twice as long of a battery life and that way, all season long, you're gonna get reliable pictures sent right to your phone. With Moultrie, you have a two-year warranty. This camera's right around $75, and like Tacticam, you're gonna have a USA-based customer support team, but they're gonna be available seven days a week. Couple other features that I really appreciate about the Edge is the fact that it has this fold-away antenna makes this very compact for transport, also protects the antenna while you're transporting it. It's the only cell camera on the market that has anything remotely close to this at this point in time. 
makes it a very nice package for throwing into a backpack. The other thing that I really appreciate is that it has that dual SIM capability, but it's automatically gonna connect to whatever service is strongest in your area. You don't have to physically pull the SIM card out and swap it to a different one. It's just gonna flip flop back and forth, whatever service is strongest in your area at that time. Now getting to the actual transmission plans for each of the companies. Reveal starts at $5 a month for 250 pictures. For $8 a month, you get 500 pictures. And for $13 a month, you get unlimited pictures. One thing to notice with Tacticam, if you look at the very bottom, is you do have to purchase a package for both HD pictures and for videos to be transmitted through the phone. It's $5 for 50 HD pictures and $5 for 50 videos to be transmitted. Another thing that Tacticam offers is their Pro Extra subscription. And what that's gonna do is enable on-demand photo capture. So right from the app, you're gonna be able to take a picture remotely through your camera. It's also gonna give you unlimited HD photos and HD video transmission instead of having to pay for the extra packages down below. And that's $9 a month. The good thing about that is it's per account. So if you were to run four or five Tacticam reveal cameras, that $9 a month is gonna get you that pro extra subscription for all of them. Moving over to the Moultrie Edge, you have only two options. You have a thousand pictures plus 10 videos for $9.99 a month, or you have unlimited pictures plus 50 videos for $16.99 a month. Something else that's noteworthy is you can get an additional 500 images on the standard plan, which is the a thousand picture a month plan for only $4.99, and you can get an additional 50 videos for $1. And that's good in case you have the standard plan and then you get a lot more pictures than expected. You can always buy additional pictures to get you through the month. We have the SpyPoint Flex. SpyPoint is the only cell camera company that offers a free plan. You get 100 free pictures every single month with a free plan, and that's really only good for very, very low traffic areas. Otherwise, you have their base package of 250 pictures for $5 a month, 1,000 pictures for $10 a month, or unlimited pictures for $15 a month. Similar to the Tacticam, you do have to buy packages for both HD picture transmittal and for video transmittal. It's $5 for 50 HD pictures and $5 for 20 videos to be transmitted through the app. Start by looking at the daytime pictures from the SpyPoint Flex. This was the day that I set up the camera. You can see me here creating a mock scrape, but at the bottom, you see the information bar. You have the date, time, temperature, and moon phase. Here's a good example of how the camera performed in hard lighting. There's a buck in the top right corner sneaking through the background. It took a while for the deer to really start using that mock scrape, but man, once they did, they hit that thing every single day. It was definitely cool to see that bucks, does, and fawns alike hit this licking branch all season long. But as you can see, the picture is relatively clear. It's pretty sharp. It's in focus, but it's nothing to write home about. In the top right corner, you can get an idea of what it's like at a little bit of a distance. It's relatively good quality. There's a couple fawns just hammering that mock scrape while mama feeds in the background. There were occasionally some blurry pictures. These bucks appear to be walking. They don't seem to me that they were both running, and yet they're both very blurry. And lastly, we have an absolute hammer of a buck coming in to hit that mock scrape. Picture is pretty clear. It's about average status quo what you can expect in the market across the board. But let's take a look at some of the nighttime pictures now. This picture is a sample of that in-between time frame where it's not quite dark, but it's not quite light. Next, we have a really nice buck hitting the licking branch. The picture quality is average, and that, as you see in the next picture where he's moving, tearing open that scrape on the ground, it's a little bit blurry. At any kind of distance, the frequency of having blurry pictures was a lot higher due to the exposure. Here's a really nice buck coming in to hit the scrape. The picture is just a little bit blurry. He's walking. It doesn't seem that he's moving super fast, so I'd expect it to be a little more crisp. All in all, you can still tell that he's a really nice buck, and I'm not overly critical of cameras performing like this. It's more of the really, really blurry ones that are of concern to me. And then you have a picture of me walking out after an evening hunt. And as I was packing up at the base of my tree that night, I was hearing grunting over in this direction. So I wanted to check the scrape to see if there was fresh pee in it. And then the next morning, this absolute brute came through, hit the scrape. Again, not a super clear picture, but man, look at the body on him. I ended up harvesting this buck November 28th on the gun opener here in Ohio. Now we'll let some of the daytime videos play so you can get an idea of the quality. See the information bar still there at the bottom. You got date, time, temperature, moon phase. And here, even at the end of December, this young buck's pursuing this doe. Relatively good quality for the distance that he's at. The deer in the front here is super clear. And then you have those couple in the top left corner. They're a little less clear, but at the same time, they're at some distance and shooting through tall grass. So it's kind of expected to be not as clear as the deer working the licking branch. And I'm not sure if the little guy scared himself here or what, but that's what's so cool about having your cameras on video mode is you can see how the deer actually act versus just seeing a picture. And then in this video, you can check the date, January 4th, but we got some chasing action still. 
And if you didn't have this on video mode, you probably would have missed this sequence altogether. You might have got a picture of that doe standing in the background. And lastly, we have this buck working that licking branch in the snow. Just super cool to see. Now we'll jump over and take a look at some of the nighttime videos. Overall, pretty average. Here's a nice up and comer just walking through, but here you get an idea of what it's like with motion. At some distance, you can't tell super well what's actually happening here. It's January 7th. These bucks are feeling a little bit frisky. Looks like a three-way buck fight, but you can't really tell how big each of these bucks are. None of them are giant. Not quite sure what's happening in this video. It looks like one raccoon's having a seizure on top of another raccoon. But despite the precipitation, you can still see the video is very clear. And honestly, I'm very impressed with the performance despite that rain or snow. Even though that ground scrape is flooded out, that licking branch continues to be a draw even all the way through the end of January. If you're in a state that doesn't allow baiting or if you're trying to find a way to manipulate deer, get more bucks on camera, making a mock scrape is a great way to do that. Last but not least, we got two up and comers fighting right in front of the camera January 22nd. I'm waiting for these antlers to come off still. It's the end of February here, and a lot of bucks are still holding. I have not found a single shed here in Ohio. Next, we'll look at the Tacticam Reveal X Pro. As you can see at the information bar in the bottom, you see battery level, moon phase, temperature, date, and time. It's one of those really hard lighting pictures, but you see a really pretty coyote walking through my sad excuse of a food plot. There was a little bit of motion blur if the deer were moving quickly, but here you see a doe moving out of the frame, but the other two deer in the picture are pretty sharp overall. Here's another example of hard lighting. I don't know what's going on with that buck. There is no shortage of food in this area. There's all sorts of ag. There's standing corn literally 20 yards from where he's standing right there, and yet you can still see his rib cage. This little poor man plot got quite a bit of action midday or late morning as bucks cruise through looking for hot does. Here's a young buck hitting that mock scrape, and in the top left corner, you can see a handful of does about 60 or 70 yards away in the field. The buck in the back of the plot there is probably about 30 yards away from the camera. You can't count points as is, but you can get an idea of how big that buck is. Overall, at that distance, I'm pretty content with how that camera performed. And then you have a nice up and comer coming to hit the vine scrape. You can see his front leg is a little bit blurry, a little bit of motion blur, but overall not bad. And then the stationary pictures are perfectly crisp. Last but not least, there's about a half dozen deer in this picture running full tilt. And overall, the quality is pretty good. Even running full speed, they're all in focus for the most part. And I'm pretty content with how the reveal did during the day. Here, let me introduce you to one of my top target bucks in Michigan. And as you can see, the buck standing on the right is stationary. The buck on the left is moving and he's blurry. And that happens a lot more frequently across all camera companies, especially when the infrared flash goes off. This picture gives you an idea of the flash range on the Reveal X Pro. That buck's probably 20 yards away. And if you were to zoom in, my guess is you could probably count points. You could see that it's a really nice buck cruising along the back edge there. This one illustrates that back end of the flash. You could see that buck working the licking branch, and I'm pretty satisfied. It'd, it'd be a lot to ask for a flash much beyond where that's illuminating. And again, you could probably zoom in and count points on that buck, so I'm pretty happy with that. A really nice Michigan buck working that licking branch. You don't typically get a lot of non-typical or sticker points in Michigan, and that guy's got a little bit of junk going on, which is always cool to see. Here's another picture of one of my top target bucks in Michigan. As you can see, the picture quality is good. It's not head and shoulders above any other camera brands, but it's definitely at least up to par. I'd like to know the outcome of the sequence. My guess is this buck probably got away, but this coyote's nipping at its heels right on him. And then here at the end of December, we have a couple nice bucks fighting. Again, a little bit blurry when they're really pushing hard, but when they're stationary, the picture is nice and clear, and that is a nice Michigan buck. As we get into the video, you'll see the information bar is just a little bit different at the bottom. All you see is the date and the time. We got dumped on with snow a few times there at the end of the year. The video quality is good. It doesn't leave me wanting a whole lot more. And then watch this doe hit this snow drift. She's running, running, and then she's struggling. I can't imagine being further north, like in the upper peninsula of Michigan. That would be a rough place for a deer to live. And we have a couple young bucks coming into the food plot to paw up some of those turnips and radishes that I'd planted. They killed the tops early season, but they didn't really touch the bulbs until about this time of the year. As you'll see, it turned into quite the draw. They were digging all over for those things in there. All in all, content is the best word to probably describe my opinion on the results of the Tacticam Reveal X. The nighttime videos followed suit. I'm content overall with their performance. 
But man, look at this thing worked out like in branch. That's just a grapevine that I'd zip tied to this tree branch and sprayed some forehead gland on it. And then what's better than a buck fight on video? This would be a cool picture sequence, but having it on video makes it way sweeter. The trigger speed on this one was a little bit slow. That buck was halfway across the frame before a video kicked in, but he was decently far away. Then there's no shortage of coyotes on this property. I need to do some predator control, but it was cool to watch and they were just digging. My guess is they're just trying to get to the deer poop and eat it like my dogs do in my backyard. This is a good illustration of how the videos turned out even in the midst of a blizzard. You can still see exactly what's happening in the frame. And then here are those late season bucks just digging at those turnips and radishes that I planted at the end of summer. Just really cool to see that something that I planted is providing nutrition and a draw for these deer. And we have a buck fight front and center, hard to top these videos. It's really cool to see it. I will say the audio seemed to be really hit or miss. Sometimes there was audio in the videos, sometimes there was not. I don't know what the reason for that. And it seemed like that was the case across the board for all of the cameras. Sometimes there's good video, sometimes there's not. But man, that's a really nice Michigan buck. I wish I would've got a crack at him. He didn't show up until right at the end of season and I was already done hunting out there. All right, last but certainly not least, we have the Moultrie Edge. And as you can see down there at the bottom, you, you can actually name your camera. You have time, date, moon phase, and temperature. I personally felt that the pictures from the edge matched or exceeded the other two cameras. Check out this goofy guy. If you know why his antler is the way that it is, let me know down below in the comments. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts. I figure it might just be a velvet injury, but curious to see what you guys think. Here's a group of does just passing through, kind of mid-morning, hard lighting, but even the doe in the top left corner and the way back is still in good focus. Here's a cool buck that passed through in the rut. The focus isn't perfect, but it's not too bad. Here's me moving one of the cameras mid-season. You can see I got my saddle on, ready to go hunting right after this. And then just a few days after, you got a really nice buck coming through the trail that I'd set that camera up on. The trigger speed, despite advertising the slowest out of the three, was generally pretty good. Here you can see this buck is barely in the frame and already had his picture taken. And then lastly, we have a group of does just to give you an idea of focus across a wide range of depth and distance from the camera. Switching over to the night pictures, I'll give it a six and a half as far as how it did when the animals were moving. Here's a picture of a coyote. This camera was up in a tree pointed down, so probably not the best illustration of how far the flash distance actually is. This demonstrates that just a little bit better. You see the flash reach all the way to the back of the cover. You can see these bucks leaving their bedding areas right at last light. Here's one at 640. Next one's at 657 p.m. going out to feed. I actually missed this one about a week before this picture was taken. I thought the dawn and dusk pictures were pretty good overall, but here you have a buck going back to bed. It's pretty evident that this is a good bed to feed pattern that these bucks are on in this spot. And then here's that buck again that I missed at 30 yards broadside, and I'll link to that hunt in the description if you guys wanna check that one out, but it was a real heartbreaker. And then here's an absolute stud. The picture quality is right about on par with the other cameras. Maybe a little bit better, maybe a little bit worse in, at times, but average out to be about the same. Finally, let's get into the video for the Moultrie Edge. When the deer were stationary or moving slow, the video quality is about as good as it gets. After I was tagged out, I did put a little bit of feed out here in Ohio just to get an idea of what bucks made it through the gun season so I could start preparing for next year. But here's a really nice up and comer eight point. I'll say it right now, if I fail to kill a turkey this spring, I am going to quit turkey hunting for the rest of my life. There seems to be a high number of birds in this area, and it should be a really, really fun spring. I think the video clips right after a heavy snow are super pretty. Here's a doe just working through the woods. This is kind of that in-between time again, but that white rack just glows walking through the woods. And again, here's just a bunch of toms feeding and scratching through the woods. I love deer hunting, but turkey hunting sure is a fun change of pace. Now looking at the night videos, I thought the quality was pretty good. You can see the flash range is illuminating that deer all the way in the back. Here's another buck that I'm gonna be keeping my eye on for future seasons. He's got some potential. The deer in the back aren't quite illuminated as well as that one. I think the buck in the front's blocking somewhat of the flash. Overall, I'm pretty satisfied with both the picture and the video quality of the Moultrie Edge. Here's just an absolute slammer of a buck. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure this buck did end up getting shot which is a huge bummer, but really cool buck and awesome to see on video. At times, if a deer was just walking right in front of the camera, the trigger was a little bit slow. You just caught the tail end of this buck here. And then to wrap things up, you got this nice eight point right in front of the camera. All three of these cameras accomplish the goal of giving you real time intel of what's happening out in the field. However, how you plan to utilize the cell camera is what's gonna determine which one's ultimately the best fit for you. With the Flex, you do have the 100 free picture a month 
transmission plan if that's what you so choose. They have the remote firmware updates, which is a huge upgrade over previous models. And they do have the 512 gigabyte capacity with the Flex, but on the flip side, the door latch, it is Python not compatible, but it is a little difficult. It's not as well designed as a lot of the other cameras have been in the past. Some people have complained about not being able to get a Python lock through the door at all. I didn't have any issues with it, but it wasn't as smooth. I had to kind of run it through funny. And then you do have spy points, notoriously subpar customer service. So if you do have issues, plan on waiting on hold for a while. With the Reveal X Pro, you have that built-in GPS, you have that internal LCD screen, and then you have that invisible flash, which I see as a huge selling point. So many times you see mature bucks staying right at the camera when you have a low glow flash. This way you're gonna go undetected and you're gonna get a lot of really cool intel. There's no real downside aside from maybe price point and the fact that you have to purchase a package separately to get HD videos and pictures transmitted to your phone, but you can pull that SD card at the end of the season. All the videos and pictures are gonna be there for you to view in real high definition, but this is a safe bet. This is my fourth camera out of the reveal line and they've all done very well for me, so I think it's a safe bet long term. Then we have the Edge. It takes great pictures and videos. You can put eight or 16 AA batteries, reducing the need to change batteries mid-season. It has that fold-away antenna for transport, and all in all, I've had a really good experience with Moultrie over the years. The only glaring downside for the Edge, which is really ironic because it's one of their major selling points for this camera, is the fact that there's no external SD card. With most cell cameras, regardless if you run it on picture or video mode, you can pull that SD card, put it into your laptop or computer, and see all of the high-definition pictures and videos right there. With the Edge, you are unable to access the internal memory, so unless you request in the app one by one, every HD picture or video, you're essentially unable to see those all together. In any other camera, you'd be able to pull out that SD card, stick it in your computer, and see every video from the entire season. But if you were to run this on video mode all year long, unless you request every single one of those videos, which are limited based off of what plan you choose, how many videos you can request, you're essentially not gonna be able to view those at all. For this reason, despite the price point and performance overall otherwise, I would definitely think twice before going this route, especially if you plan to run your cameras on video mode. If you're exclusively going to run it on picture mode, it could be a good option still, especially at a sub $80 price point. I've presented the facts, now it's up to you to decide which of these fits best into your camera lineup. My ask to you now is that if you do plan to buy any of these cameras, purchase them from the links down below in the description. I do make a small commission from that at no extra cost to you. It just helps support the channel. I try to make these reviews as honest and transparent as possible to help you make the most educated decision you can. If you guys found this video helpful, please smash that like button, subscribe to my channel. I have a lot of really cool things coming up and you're not gonna wanna miss them.